My son is 22. He's a senior in college, majoring in burning currency, doing very well. Um, <laughs> Twenty-two, and it's time to pass life's lessons on to him as they were passed on to me. Because you're not just trying to raise a good child, you're trying to raise a good parent. You, you, can't, you, can't, you don't want to lose sight of that. You wonder, you're trying to raise a good parent. So you take the great life's lessons passed on to you, and you pass them on to your children. And some are simple, some are big, some are small. It says, son, life has two size lessons, big and small. You'll see the big lessons coming a mile away because they're big. But the little lessons get you further down the highway because there are so many of them. So tonight, some little lessons in life. Here we go. If you are driving your automobile through dense fog, you do not see any better by putting your face closer to the windshield. <laughs> Take it home. If you are driving your automobile through dense fog, turning the radio down does not make the fog go away. <laughs> so son, you're gonna have bad habits, that's okay. You live in a free country. You're free to do things that are bad for you as well as good. You're gonna have bad habits, that's part of being free. Don't have them all at one time. Much truth in that. Here's a list of my bad habits, pretty short list at that. I'm a middle-aged man from Louisville, Kentucky. I go to Churchill Downs Racetrack every chance I get. I love horse racing. That's my passion in life. Uh, let's see. I might, I might play a little poker, shoot a little golf, hang out with my friends. I'm a beet feeder. I love a good piece of red meat, and I don't apologize to anybody for that. <laughs> steak eaters, steak eaters, let me hear from you. Steak eaters, cut on the please. Vegetarians, you now, please. <laughs> they don't have the strength to lift their hands. Can you hear two of them? And here's the point. We live together in the miracle of a free society. I'll eat what I wish, and I expect you to as well. I do not need to hear from those who know better for me how to live my life in a free society than I know how to live it for myself. I had someone tell me, Mark, you should not eat red meat. Beef will give you a heart attack. My dear friends, coronary disease is virtually unknown among cattle, and they are made of beef. <laughs> Lessons for my son. Pursue your dreams. Look, look, look where you live. A Western capitalist democracy. Freer to pursue your dreams in America than any place else in the world. How do we know that? Because a million people a day want to come here and nobody wants to leave. Because people understand. In America, you're free to pursue your dreams. I say you don't have to catch your dreams. Just run one step faster in your nightmares. You'll be okay. <laughs> This year I pursued a Kentuckian's life's dream. I bought my first thoroughbred racehorse. This is so cool. You get to name your horse. Now all Kentuckians know this. It's a great racetrack tradition. When you name a thoroughbred, you try to combine the name of the horse's mother and the horse's father. It's called the sire line, S-I-R-E for the father, and the dam line, D-A-M, for the mother. For example, the 1987 Kentucky Derby won by a horse named Ali Sheba. They named Ali Sheba after his father, a very famous stallion back then named Alidar, and his mother, a brood mare named Belle Sheba. They named their million dollar colt Ali Sheba, okay? Okay. <laughs> we used a stallion named Prickly Ruler. <laughs> and a brood mare named Bad Bad Mood. <laughs> we named it Bill Belichick. <laughs> uh, uh, I change that joke about every four years, don't worry about it. <laughs> I do have a racehorse. I have a four-year-old chestnut filly. Her name is Aura Cat. Now more about being from Kentucky. When you're from Kentucky, where your horse comes from is more important than where you come from. And that's true. So many from Kentucky know that horse's family further back than their own. So indulge me. Her name is Aura Cat. She's the four-year-old daughter of Scatmandu, granddaughter of half-million-dollar sire Storm Cat. She's a great-great-granddaughter of Secretariat. Woo! Her mother's side traces back to 1964 Derby winner, the great Canadian Colt Northern Dancer. The blood of Kentucky's equine royalty courses through her veins. Names that thunder at you out of the past. Bold ruler, Seattle slew, whirl away the mighty citation, and she cannot run worth a darn. <laughs> 
she's killing me, pal. She's killing me. <laughs> We spent $25,000 on this filly, and as you may know, you don't get the fastest horse at Kentucky for $25,000. We got her at Costco. <laughs> she came in a pack of 18. She had her first race a year ago at Churchill Downs racetrack. She broke 11th in a field of 12. The horse that she beat out of the starting gate apparently had laid down to foal when they threw the gates open. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. When it's your horse, when it's your horse out there, it's like your kid. You don't give up on your kid. You don't give up on your horse. We gave up on this one. <laughs> She was passed in the final furlong, went to Amish couples, then a glacier went flying by. <laughs> Life's lessons for my son. I left him with a big one, and it's the one you're going to remember tomorrow. You are the only animal in the history of life on earth that laughs, and nobody knows why. You're the only animal history of, of life in the universe, evolution, creation, I don't know, nobody knows. The only animal that can laugh Nobody can tell you why. The ability to make people laugh is not genetically transmittable. Part of your brain that controls laughter is in your neocortex. That's, if you're an evolutionist, the most recent development in your brain. If you're a creationist, that's kind of the icing on the cake before they closed up the box. Either way, <laughs> that's where you laugh. We're the only animal that tells each other jokes. The only animal that can respond to jokes purposefully told to it for the purpose of laughter. A unique gift to humans. So I close my show with jokes. I love jokes, old jokes, jokes I didn't write, jokes I collect from people just like yourselves. My family has favorite jokes. I hear jokes from people like you all. So when my show is over, want to come tell me your favorite joke? I'd love to hear it. Let's tell some jokes. My family's favorite jokes start with my brother Howard. He's an oral and maxillofacial surgeon back in Louisville, Kentucky, 45 year practice of surgery. His favorite joke's about a doctor. A man goes to a psychiatrist. Doctor, can you help me? He says, what's wrong? He said, I think I'm a dog. You what? I think I'm a dog. I bark at the moon. I roll on the grass, eat food from a dish. I tell you, doctor, I think I'm a dog. Can you help me? Well, I don't know. Get on the couch and we'll talk about it. Oh, I'm not allowed on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get any better, man. There's just more of them, all right? So don't worry about that. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the lady they sitting in the bank should be going, Mom, Mom, 